Animation is a medium that allows one to cross all boundaries and express every possible expression. Without three-dimensional visual realism holding you back, the sky's the limit when it comes to creativity in this field. And anime has made the optimum use of this as it comes in a wide variety of genres and can appeal to an audience across all age groups. Of course, we're all very aware of anime being no stranger to more mature themes. In some cases, this has led to certain works being banned in certain countries. Death Note and Attack on Titan are banned in China due to their dark nature and violence. In fact, China censors visual displays of blood. Harem Anime High School DXD is banned in New Zealand for obvious reasons. Hitalia Axis Powers is banned in South Korea for its depiction of Korea during the Second World War when the country used to be a colony of Japan. In fact, the term Axis Powers being used in a comedy anime in itself is quite controversial and it makes sense why it was banned. Although censorship was much more lax back in the 90s compared to today, one particular piece of work by Suihiro Mauru has managed to be so graphic that it has been banned not just in a select few countries, but worldwide. In fact, no one wanted to animate the original novel, due to which the director, Hiroshi Harada, had to single-handedly create, animate, and produce the film. Yes, we are talking about the infamous 1992 film Midori, Shoujo Subaki, or The Camellia Girl. The name in itself is quite innocent to say the least, as Midori translates to green, Shoujo to girl, and Camellia to Subaki. But that's where the PG ratings for this film begin and end, so don't tell us we didn't warn you first, proceed with caution. Before getting into the content, we'd like to make a very small request to viewers. Please subscribe to our channel, like and comment on our videos, and press the bell icon to be notified whenever we upload new content. We'd be grateful to you, and we hope to bring you the best in nerdy content in the future. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. The Story of Midori, Shoujo Subaki, an erotic drama of horrors beyond comprehension. We're introduced to a prepubescent girl named Midori. She's an ingenue who enjoys her school life. Sadly, her misfortunes begin when her father abandons the family and her mother falls terminally ill. To provide for the family, Midori resorts to selling camellia flowers, thus becoming the titular camellia girl or the shoujo subaki. One day, she's met with a strange man named Mr. Arashi. He hears her out as she tells him about the condition of her family. Surprisingly, he offers to take her somewhere livelier. Soon, Midori comes back home to her sick mother and tells her that she has found someone who can help her go on the school trip that she previously couldn't afford. However, her mother doesn't respond, and Midori witnesses the grotesque visual of her now-dead mother being eaten by rats as she removes the blanket. Stricken with grief, Midori is left with no choice but to seek out the mysterious man who had promised her a better life. And so she does, but what awaits her is a place far worse than hell itself. She's taken in by a group of street magicians and performers as their team's newest addition, but these performers are far from being the average eccentric characters, to say the least. There's a partially mummified man named Muchisuti, who is without arms. There's a one-eyed strongman named Akaza the Giant, with tattoos reminiscent of the Yakuza and a shaved head. There's a fire-swallowing performer named Kanabun, and a voluptuous, promiscuous, snake-charming woman named Benitsu. In fact, Benitsu makes her first appearance in front of Midori while casually topless, adding to the shock factor. There's also a man who crawls the ground like a snail, and another one whose anatomy is folded like a pretzel. Before she can become acquainted with them, she is physically assaulted by the crew, which goes on to become a part of her daily life. She's often left bleeding, or gets subjected to Mr. Arashi's unconventional kink of licking the eyes, also known as oculolinctus. These acts become the very thing she gets displayed for by the troop. She even finds herself having to witness intercourse between the snake-charming woman, the mummified man, and the strong man right after opening her eyes. She cannot even escape to a different room because over there, she has to witness Mr. Arashi licking an unclad cannabun's eyeball. Throughout all the acts of perversion, everyone seems to be wrapped up by snakes. Having dropped out of school and living a hellish life, Midori finds her tiny piece of happiness in feeding some street puppies. She tries to keep it a secret from the performers so as not to endanger them. Unfortunately, Kanabun finds out about the dogs, killing them brutally on screen and feeding them to the performers, and passively makes it very evident to Midori that these are the dogs she had been trying to protect. Midori's attempt at escaping is also foiled by Benetsu, and the atrocities continue with the mummified man a 
assaulting her on a cold, windy night. In the upcoming scene, Midori watches Kanabun practicing their fire breathing. Although they have a stereotypically girlish face, Midori soon witnesses them urinating while standing. As Kanabun turns towards her, it is revealed that they are intersex, and they perversely relieve themselves by hand in front of Midori. In one particular moment, she's asked to wash the folded performer, the visual of which frightens her to the core. As punishment, she is stripped, beaten with a whip, and once again, assaulted by the members. Throughout it all, Midori exclaims how she wishes to go back to school. The continued trauma gives Midori nightmares of her father, and the crew members engulfing her with their snakes. We also find out that the circus is running at a loss as Mr. Arashi tries to sort their finances. Around this time, Benetsu tries to initiate intercourse with him, but because Mr. Arashi is a homosexual and a pedophile, he turns Benetsu down. And finally, the story gets the closest thing it can have to Midori's Prince Charming on a white horse when a dwarf man named Wonder Masumitsu joins the performers. Masumitsu is renowned for practicing western-style stage magic, with his main act being his slipping in and out of his large glass bottle, which absolutely does not have the necessary design to accommodate a regular human being. And yet, Wonder Masumitsu pulls it off. On his first day, Midori blushes at his skills, and he shows an interest in her when he kisses her on the cheek. Masumitsu becomes the first person to show Midori a speck of kindness, and she begins to fall in love with him. The street performance business of the crew also begins to see profits, as Masumitsu's act becomes a crowd favorite. Throughout it all, the other members become practically useless, and no one wants to see them. They even lose their power against Midori, who is now protected by Masumitsu. She begins to stand up for herself and talk back at them, and when they try something funny with her, Masumitsu pays them back in kind. He even shows off magical abilities that are far beyond simple tricks, such as enlarging Midori's body to intimidate the other members. Soon, she is approached by the mummified man Muchisute, who claims to like her. He does not want her to be with Masumitsu and tries to get with her again, but Masumitsu sees it all and uses his magic tricks to make him drown in the ground. He ultimately kills him and stuffs mud inside him via his mouth. The grotesque act turns Midori against Masumitsu to an extent because she cannot bear such a display of cruelty. However, he tells that he did it all for her. One fine day, another man in a hat comes to the quarters of the performers and offers Midori to be the lead actress for his movie. Ecstatic about the offer, Midori takes it, but Masumitsu tears the man's business card apart because he doesn't want to share Midori with anything or anyone. In secret, she pieces the paper together once again and tries to hide it, but Masumitsu finds out everything and destroys her chances at a better life. He even hits her and binds her inside his jar. Masumitsu then goes on stage and in a fit of rage, disfigures everyone in the audience with his magical powers. The other stage performers find it funny, but Masumitsu eventually has to turn them normal once again. The great extent of his magical prowess weakens his body, while Mr. Arashi worries about the incident ruining their business. Soon, Masumitsu tells them that he is resigning and puts Midori in an illusion of being with her family in Asakusa, Tokyo. When she wakes up, they leave for the capital city together, and surprisingly, there is somewhat of a heartfelt goodbye between Midori and the performance group. She even mentions how she wishes to see them again, even though they are the ones who have caused her so much pain. Unfortunately, Masumitsu gets killed by a thief in Tokyo, and Midori frantically searches for him. However, the continued trauma has pushed her into a state of madness, and she keeps running back to the same location. In the end, she experiences a hallucination of the troop members, including Masumitsu, and picks up a stick to hit them. Although she's technically not harming them, in her head, she is using the weapon to kill everyone. And that is how the film ends. What makes the film so controversial? Why is it such a stomach-churning watch? Apart from the very obvious and graphic violent nature of the film, Shoujo Tsubaki revels in its imagery. Imageries that give gore a run for its money, although the show is not devoid of that either. At the very beginning of the movie, we get a glimpse of the activities of the stage performers. In their stage acts, there lies a skit with Mr. Arashi sadistically torturing Midori with a whip while she has to bend down with her bottoms bare for the public to see. We even see an unclad Benetsu in a sea of snakes, with some of the serpents wrapped around her while others crawl across and into her privates. Streetlights swarming with bees, Midori's mother getting eaten by rats, disgustingly graphic acts of intercourse, nudity, and pedophilia prevail in the first quarter of the film. Not to forget the scenes with Mr. Arashi licking eyeballs. But the most gut-churning of them all all has to be the scene where Kanabun smacks the puppies on the ground and steps on them. As they squash the puppies, their innards and eyes pop out of their bodies. Although many people
people can stomach gruesome visuals, they tend to draw the line when it comes to animal cruelty. Shoujo Subaki does not allow us that privilege. There are also dead chickens with blood all over them, a visual depiction of Kanabun urinating, and an excess amount of phallic symbols with the snakes, which symbolize unconsented activities of copulation. Although some of it comes to a halt as the story progresses, we get to see one of the goriest scenes of the show when Masumitsu disfigures the crowd. We see human intestines coming out of human bodies, among other organs. We get to see their faces change shape in the most grotesque ways. We even get to see Masumitsu stuffing Muchisuri's mouth with mud. But what's the most disturbing is how there is rampant pedophilia in the film. Midori, after all, is only 12. This makes all the members of the troupe, their audience, and Masumitsu raging pedophiles. This is also why Mr. Arashi turned down Benetsu's offer. She was a grown woman while he was interested in minors such as Midori and Kanaba. Unfortunately, Midori found solace in her disturbing relationship with a man as old as Masumitsu because the rest of her life was even worse. Life has to be really, really awful for a person to find happiness in a twisted relationship. We see this even in our reality, when good people often get into terrible relationships with terrible people and try to cover for their poor treatment because they have experienced worse. It's hard to understand what love should truly look like when you have little to no experience with it. The film fills the audience with pain as we feel deeply for Midori. Because we can equate her situation with reality, we feel pain for the little girl who constantly looks at the trains passing by, hoping to escape. We feel terrible for the girl who just wants to go to school and is eventually driven to madness due to her continued trauma. Mauru's True Intent Why he created a story as disturbing as Shoujo Subaki. With Shoujo Subaki, Maru tries to shed a light on the cycle of brutality that persists in society. Masumitsu's magical abilities are the only fantasy elements in the film. Everything else is not only just a possibility, but often a reality. We may witness a street comedy or a fun-filled circus, but we don't get to know what happens behind the scenes. This is true not just for Japan, but for every place in the world. One of the saddest scenes in the story would definitely be the one with Midori bidding everyone goodbye while leaving the troupe and hoping to see them again. It's disheartening, because even in real life, people continue to like their abusers due to something known as Stockholm Syndrome. It's hard to objectively hate those who have traumatized you when your sense of self has been destroyed. And no one knows this better than Midori herself. Those who face such abuse tend to develop irrational attachments to their abusers. And that's exactly what ends up happening to Shoujo Tsubaki's tragic protagonist. The rampant pedophilia also alludes to it being a real issue in Japan. For the longest time, the age of consent in the East Asian inland country had been 13. Although different prefectures could and most definitely did set different ages of consent, with the numbers ranging mostly from 16 to 18, it was legally and nationally set at 13, which is only the beginning of one's teenage years. Crimes against minors have been reducing in recent years, thanks to Japan's more vigilant stance on abuse of minors in the 21st century, but things are still not where they should be. In 2021, Japan reported 2,247 cases of sexual abuse against children. That statistic is but 1% of the overall minor abuse abuse crime statistics, but it's still too high of a number regardless. Back when this movie was released, that number could have just as easily had a zero behind it. And that is terrifying to think about, because Japan didn't even have laws to combat this situation in the first place. Japan's Child Abuse Prevention Act came into effect in the year 2000, eight years after the release of Shoujo Subaki, which gives you an idea of just how bleak things must have been before that. Midori's life is similar to that of a camellia flower. Known for its delicate beauty, the flower can also be toxic. When her mother dies, Eyes, she is surrounded by the camellia flowers, the toxicity of which could have aggravated her condition, leading to her death. Being innocent, Midori didn't know that the flowers could have such an adverse effect. Similarly, she never expected her life to take such a terrifying wrong turn. A turn that proved that horror does not need ghosts and spirits. A turn that proves how horror can, and most definitely does, exist in reality. Marvelous Verdict One could argue that such severe depictions of child abuse, perversion, and pedophilia are controversial because of the influence media has on society. One could also argue that this helps shed light on the evils of society and makes us truly understand the severity of the problems, thus helping to curb them. The film makes us uncomfortable and churns our stomachs after all. And yet, it also makes absolute sense for such a piece of work to be banned worldwide. It makes you question just what kind of horrors can society hold in store for us, or whether the author is just just an extreme kind of perversion enthusiast. And that's why we thought it would be interesting to dissect this film with you guys. With that, today's video comes to an end. 
What did you think of Midori, Shoujo Subaki? Did you enjoy this video? If so, then don't forget to like and comment. Until then, stay safe out there and have a marvelous day.